Hello, this is um, um, Lavinia World DT Bonnie, and we're going to be um, working on uh, making a fall uh, card and, um, and doing some inking and stamping. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be using Distress Oxide um, Pumice Stone. And what I like to do for my um, base is I like to use my um, blending brush and a little bit of um, water. I want this to be a little bit damp. It actually kind of like, it's more like a painting with it. So I'm going to get that a little bit damp. It's not saturated, it's just a little bit damp. And all I do is I uh, rub a little bit of it over the top of my card base. I just want a little bit of color to it um, when I go to create. Now, it is a little bit wet, so it is raising the um, fibers a little bit on the top of this card. It's just regular cardstock, but it is, um, I think it's 110 a GSM. So it's not, you know, it's a little bit stiffer. It's not really the just standard cardstock. And all I do is I just lightly, like I said, go over the top to give it a little bit of color. It almost looks like a little bit of a very light um, watercolor wash. And then I let that dry before I do any stamping at all. So I'm going to go ahead and let that stand and dry. Okay, so for the next step, I have my torn paper that I've used several times. And I am going to be making um, some mountains at the top here. And um, one of the things I wanted to tell you about reusing um, paper that has already been inked, lots of times it will pull this color down to the very top. Now I kind of like that because it will give a little bit of um, a shading. But, um, oh, I am using Broken China for the top of my for the first top of the mountains. And in this case, I'm coming down instead of, lots of times I will be going up, but in this case, I am gonna be going down. I think I need to get one of those stationary um, pads that you, um, that Tim Holtz uses to keep his um, ink steady because when you have one hand holding the paper and then the other one um, trying to get the ink, it moves around. And he uses, I'm trying to think of what you call it, it's what you would line your cupboards with, the foamy or it's not, yeah, it's kind of like spongy, bumpy pad um, that you would line your cupboards with to put your dishes on. He uses those and they're cut like in squares and that keeps it stationary. Okay, so that is going to be the top of the mountain there. And then the next color, I'm trying to stay with colors that are fall colors. And the next color I'm gonna use is a wild honey. And I'm still gonna be using my um, torn paper, but a different section. I'm gonna be using this section. And I'm going, to go, I'm going to go down again for this section. <clears throat> and I'm going to go ahead and use a different brush just because I want to keep these colors different for my brush. Okay, this is, whoops, I moved. This is giving us a little bit brighter color, which is the color I kind of like want for the fall. And doing it this way, it gives you a little bit of white in between, as you can see. So it looks like the clouds are down in there and that's kind of cool. And then the other color I want to use is squeezed lemonade. And that's going to be for the bottom one. And for this one, I am going to go a little bit like that. 
And I am gonna use the same brush from the Wild Honey. And we're gonna go up. And you can see it's pulling a little bit of that, like I said, that purple that's already on there and giving it a little bit of a cast of a, almost a green. Okay, so this part right here, I'm gonna come back in and give it a little bit more of the squeezed lemonade. Okay, so that's gonna be like my basic. What I'm going for, I'm gonna go add, I'm gonna add some stuff up here um, and I'm gonna get that ready. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is a moon. And I've pulled my paper back out. It's not exactly matching up with that, but it's gonna work for what I wanna do. And then I have a, just a piece of cardstock and it's roughly about, mm, about an inch and three quarters. And I'm gonna set that here because that's gonna be my moon. Now I'm gonna be go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and use the same um, pumice stone that I used for the background because this will make it a little bit darker. And I'm just gonna go around slightly around the moon because I just want a little bit of a halo from that. And um, I'm gonna make sure I have enough of it so that there is a difference between the two. Um, so there's so that you can see the the moon. I want it to be a little bit subtle, but I think this will work. If not, I'm going to go ahead and pull it a little bit darker gray, and give myself an, another shadow. Let's see. Nope, that works pretty good. And you can see there's a little bit right here. And I'm going to go ahead and use my smallest brush and um, put some of that gray in there. Might have to add a little bit more later. Good. Yeah, that's working. That'll work. And then I'm gonna go around. And like I said, don't really worry because I'm gonna add a little bit of stuff to the moon. And what I'm going to do is I have another piece of paper that's just torn, pretty much basic torn and I like to put a little bit of clouds uh, really fine clouds through there and again I'm just using the puma stone and you don't need to put very much on because it shows up really right away it could also be a, I mean technically it really could be the Sun too if I would have made it more um, light and um, put yellow behind. I still could if I wanted to. So that's what that's going to look like. And that's going to be kind of like our basic setup. And then I'm going to add a little bit more color up here. And I'll go ahead and pull out some colors for that. All right, for up at the top, I decided I'm gonna be using uh, weathered wood. And I'm just gonna use, again, my big brush. It is not wet. And I'm just gonna pull in some of that darker color into the color I already had in the background. Pull it across the top of the page. I didn't say um, the size that I made my card top, this, this part is five and a half inches. So that's pretty much what that's going to look like. And then what I do, the exact same thing that I did to the moon, is I add a little bit of the, um, it looks like the clouds in the background, and I'm going to be still using um, the pumice, well actually this is the um, weathered wood, like I said, and add that to it. And that gives you a little bit of the look of background clouds and I 
don't want to get it on the top of the mountain, so I'll try not to get close to that. So that's that side, and then I'm going to get this other side right through here. And again, I'm not going to get it on the moon. Okay, so that's going to be the look up at the top. The next thing that I need to do is I'm going to start working towards the bottom and then we're going to be stamping. So I am going to go ahead and use this and that is going to be kind of like my, I don't want to say horizon, but the base kind of like of the horizon in a way. And I'm just lightly going to add that. Okay, take a look at that. That's just, I needed something, like I said, for my tree line area. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more of the weathered root to the bottom. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is, is pull out um, the stamps we're gonna use. I need to get that little piece off. Okay. Okay, so if you've watched my videos before on um, the Lavinia World YouTube channel, you know that what I try to do is I pull out the um, acetate that comes with the stamps so I can lay out the design that I'm planning on. And so that's what I've done with everything you see here. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you what I have on the card in case you want to pull that out for yourself and give it a try. So um, the tree is back here. Our LAV021 uh, Christmas Tree Group. And then the one for a tree right here is LAV094 Fur Tree 1. And then the mini castle, LAV215. And then the birds that are flying are LAV097. The large path in the front is LAV246. And then the sweet little bunny is LAV581. <clears throat> now when I go to stamp this, I will be stamping what is in the front first um, because I um, use clear embossing powder um, usually when I stamp. And so that means that anything that's in the front needs to be stamped first. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it all set up to do that. Okay, so <clears throat> far I have got the large path, the bunny pippin, and the mini castle and the birds stamped, and they're all embossed with clear embossing powder. And the reason I do it this way is because, like I said, when I go to stamp, I want whatever goes behind it to go behind um, what's in the front, and it works better this way um, for me to stamp. So anyway, in order for me to figure all these things out, I had to lay, like I said, all these papers down to see where they needed to go so that I could stamp them. Now I've got this um, Christmas tree um, group set up and ready to stamp so you can see how that will go. I'll go ahead and show you that. These I didn't think was all that important other than to position them in the right places but like I said I go ahead and I use the clear um, acrylic that comes with the stamps for placement so I know where I want to put things. It also helps me um, because then I can see, like I said, which way the stamps go. Um, but that's one of the things you have to be careful with acrylic. If they, you can see it from both sides and you really want to know which is the right way. That helps. So that's how that's going to go. <clears throat> and I know I'm going to have to stamp this more than once. <clears throat> it's just how it goes for me. Just, I'm very thankful for this platform. This one's not going all the way down. It could very well be this magnet is up a little bit higher than what I want it to be. Yep. I'll put that up just a little bit. Okay. 
I'm also starting to think that because I'm using my ink pad a lot, I'm going to have to, for the first time, re-ink my ink pad. Which is another reason why I have to probably usually stamp more than once. I need to let that sit on there for a little bit. Then the other one I'm going to put is the, the other tree right here, and then I'm going to put a little mound for the little pippin to sit on. Let's see. Yep, I just need a little bit more. that's much better so then like I said then the next thing I do is I put that over and I put clear embossing powder on that also but because I've I'm doing this right at the moment I'm gonna see if I can quickly do this here's my again this is what I do is I line it up to where I want it to be and that's how I usually do it just like that I need to pull this a little bit closer. Whoops. I think that'll still be fine. Right, make sure. Yep, gotta go up further. Yep. Okay. I do. I think I need to re ink my ink pad. Needs a little bit more. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and heat emboss that with clear embossing powder. Okay, so this is what I'm going to use for my little mound, and I'm going to still use um, weathered wood so that it shows up a little bit, and I'm going to make it so that it goes kind of like almost right to the path. And because I have heat embossed with um, the powder, um, I can also come back and if this dulls my stamping, I can rub it back with a little bit of water because this ink is all um, water-based. Okay. I'm going to give that a little bit more color there. I'm going to go back in there and make that a little darker. Looks like he's sitting on his uh, little mound there. Give it a little bit more color. Yep. 
Here we go. And like I said, this, um, I can use a little bit of the uh, water and pull that back off so it's still shiny. Okay, so that's how that's gonna be for sitting there. I have a little bit more to do, so, but that's our basic card. I'm gonna add a little bit more over here and, uh, and I'm gonna color in the steps too. Okay, so I've got this um, pretty much set up the way we're gonna. I'm gonna be using it, and um, I added two more stamps. One of the stamps is L A V four eight five. See a fairy make a wish, and I also added tree scene, which is L A V two one nine. Now the reason why I ended up adding the trees is because when I went to go stamp the sentiment, I did not put it in the platform. I just stamped it up and then just put it down. Doing that, I ended up with a little bit of a smudge. So I decided to add the trees to cover up that little mistake. And that's why you have three rows of trees right there. The other thing is that then I went ahead and added um, more of the hills to it to give it a little bit more dimension. So right now I am coloring the stones on the, uh, the pathway. And um, I am using the um, Prismacolor pencils. This one's dark brown, 946. That is the darkest one I'm using, and I'm kind of like trying to go in the spots where the more of the shading would be in the stone. And then the next one I'm going to be using is um, this is um, sandal. I think that says sandal. Sand. Oh, sandbar. Sandbar um, brown, and it's 1094. That's my next lightest color, and I'm just adding a little bit. And I did that to all the stones up above. And then the last one I'm going to use. Um, I can't really see the whole thing, but I think it's uh, putty beige, and that's 1083, and it's my lightest color. So I'm just going to blend that all in together. So um, <clears throat> the stone pathway really does um, allow you to do some coloring, especially if you don't um, clear emboss it first. Um, you can actually do that too. So that's um, what we have for today. I'm going to put that on a card base, and I will show you when you come at the beginning, it'll be there for you to see what it looks like as a card. Thanks so much for stopping by. Don't forget that um, Lavinia World Channel has um, a DT sharing on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And we'd love it if you'd subscribe and share. Thanks so much.